Hey everyone, so I haven't been posting as much lately. I've been spending more time with my family for the holidays, but that ends today because I saw this video put out by AutoTrader that has a sort of response to the criticism that they received when they did some incredibly sketchy things in a drag race between a Lamborghini and a Tesla, and we need to talk about it. So I wanna go over everything because AutoTrader, in my opinion, handled the situation horribly, but then as we'll get to in a bit, instead of owning up to their mistakes, blamed them on raging Tesla fanboys who are the real issue. But before we get into it, I wanna let you in on a new way to help out the channel and get yourself up to four free stocks. Webolt, the stock trading app, is currently offering two free stocks just for opening an account, and then another two free stocks if you make a $100 deposit and you're in the US. If you just open an account, you'll get a minimum of $5 worth of stock, and if you make a $100 deposit, you'll get a minimum of 21 bucks of free stock total. If you're interested, click the link in the description for more information. Okay, so, I actually made a deep dive on everything that they did wrong in that original Drag Race video, which I'll link below, and you should watch before this one, but if you don't want to, it's cool. I'll do a quick summary to catch everyone up to speed. Here's the short of it. About a month ago, AutoTrader posted a Drag Race between a Lamborghini Huracan Performante and a Tesla Model S. I can never pronounce Performante right. In that Drag Race, the Lamborghini wins, which was a surprise to absolutely no one, but right before the race, they filmed a clip of the Tesla screen and the Tesla was around 30% charged. For those of you that don't know, Teslas can be around half as quick when they're low on battery. So drag racing a Tesla that's low on charge is going to give you dramatically worse times. Something of course AutoTrader is aware of. When AutoTrader inevitably received floods of comments about this section of their video showing the Tesla having a low battery before the race, AutoTrader responded by, and I swear I'm not joking about this, blurring out the screen on the Tesla. And I shouldn't even have to say anything about why that's a horrible policy. When you receive negative criticism about how your race was conducted unfairly and your response to that criticism is to hide the thing that people are criticizing, that is a problem. So after receiving even more, and I'm sure probably much worse, criticism on blurring out Tesla's screen, AutoTrader unblurred it and pinned a comment from Rory, the host, that said that the Tesla wasn't low on charge in that race, the clip that they showed was from later on in the day. Which that may be the case, we'll talk about that in a second, but even if that is the case, in no world is the acceptable or correct thing to do when caught making an honest mistake, which is what they're claiming happened, is to then hide that mistake as quickly as possible. If that's your policy for handling mistakes, people won't trust you, and they shouldn't. So I did some detective work, and even though they didn't post the race times for the two cars, we could figure out the difference between the two cars' times, and because we know what the quarter mile time should be for both cars due to third party sources all over the internet, we can deduce that the Tesla was much slower than it should have been. The margin between the two cars should have been around 0.2 seconds, and instead it was around 0.8 seconds, or about four times longer than what we would expect. So it's not that the Tesla lost, we knew it was going to lose, and that's fine. The problem is that it lost by significantly more than you would expect given real world race times posted all around the internet. And maybe if I trusted AutoTrader, I'd probably be willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, but seeing how they handled the battery incident, I'm not too keen on taking them at their word. Again, if you want more details on everything, check out my last video, I covered it quite thoroughly. So that was that. AutoTrader did a drag race showing a low battery Tesla, got caught, blurred out the screen, and then gave the reason as to why the Tesla was showing a low battery. So now getting on to today's video, which is a drag race between a bunch of cars, including a Tesla, here's what I take issue with. The whole video is around four minutes, but the part I wanna talk about is only around a minute, so let's take a look. Now this is an interesting one. Firstly, because the Lambo and the Tesla have met before in a race that some fanboys found highly contentious. off the line, he's beating me off the line, but I closed the gap. We are doing it. Come on, Lambo power for the win. Yes! That is spectacular. Apparently, we're being paid by big oil. We're biased against Tesla. All despite the fact that the Model 3 is our 2020 car of the year. It's also interesting because this race involves another electric car, the Taycan 4S. It's less powerful than the Model S, but we're curious to see how it fares. Okay, so 
He's saying that for the race in question, some fanboys found it highly contentious. And we know that he's not talking about Lambo fanboys because the Lamborghini performed as to be expected as far as we can tell. He's clearly talking about Tesla fanboys and we should get this out of the way first. If you think Tesla the company and the cars are absolutely perfect and they should win every race and can do no wrong, you're a fanboy and I'm not talking to you. Those people are out there and they cannot be reasoned with, so I'm not even going to try. That being said, lumping everyone who had a problem with that race in the category of fanboy isn't correct, nor is it fair. The race clearly had some legitimate issues, whether you're a Tesla fan or not. You can't just post a race showing the Tesla at a very low charge, and then when people shout foul play, say everyone who's calling you out is just a fanboy. There is legitimate criticism that was earned from that drag race and needs to be addressed by AutoTrader, and as far as I can tell, it hasn't been. It's hardly reasonable to show a screen on the Tesla displaying low battery, then when called out on it, blurring that screen, then saying anyone who had an issue with the race is a fanboy. And then with the next part of the video saying that people accuse you of being paid by big oil, even though you made the Model 3 your car for 2020, that's a red herring. Yes, some people accuse you of being paid by big oil, but that isn't the main problem with the drag race. People on the internet are going to say literally anything. And so using those statements made by some people and lumping everything together as if everyone thinks the same way some people on the fringe think isn't reasonable and it's quite dishonest. You could be paid by big oil, or you could be paid by Tesla themselves, and as long as you host a fair drag race, nobody would care. The other thing he said is that they're including the Porsche Taycan, which is another EV, and so they clearly aren't being paid by big oil. And I think that's kind of a silly argument because Porsche makes almost entirely internal combustion engines at the moment, the exception being the Taycan. Porsche is owned by Volkswagen, who is, depending on which year you look at, the largest or second largest automotive manufacturer in the world, and who sells almost entirely internal combustion engine cars. And we know there's a distinct difference between Tesla, who only makes EVs, and every other traditional automotive manufacturer who primarily makes gas cars. But they also make some EVs. Point being, if AutoTrader said that EVs perform terribly, who would it affect more? Tesla or Porsche? Regardless, this portion of the video is in my estimation trying to show that Tesla fanboys are crazy and Auto Trader, the company is just being attacked for no reason by some fringe lunatics who will scream at anything. And don't get me wrong, those people are out there and they're amazingly vocal, but they are a minority. This video is trying to frame the situation as if Auto Trader has done absolutely nothing wrong with regards to the drag race and it doesn't matter who you are, if you look at the evidence and how they handled that situation, you can clearly see that AutoTrader did make mistakes. Anyways, I want to talk about the problem with how AutoTrader handled the situation as a whole because I think there's something important to be learned here. First, when they showed the clip of the Tesla's battery being low before the race and people caught them, they should have just pinned the comment giving an explanation and owning it as an honest mistake. Blurring out the screen was at least in some amount an admission of guilt. So the correct thing to do in the first place, as always, is just to admit when you're wrong and that's it. I've found, and I could be wrong about this, but when you're open and honest when people about your mistakes, they're almost always forgiving and willing to accept that, of course we're all humans and we all make mistakes. But as soon as you try and cover everything up as if nothing happened, now you're giving ammo to the people who are saying you're a fraud, or in this case, people who are saying you're paid by big oil and biased against Tesla. By blurring out that part of the video, Auto Trader single-handedly lost any benefit of the doubt or goodwill that people had for them with that drag race. But then a month after the whole fiasco, Auto Trader chose to come out with this video and mock the people who called them out for that race seemingly just to save face. And that's clearly in bad form. They could have addressed the issues that people had with the race and try and inform everyone of the situation. But instead, they turned to belittling the people who caught their mistakes. So my words of advice to auto traders, not that they'll heed it or that it really matters, but it's to own your mistakes, not hide from them. And then from a more practical thing you could do in the future to avoid these situations, like I said in my last video, include in the video the charge state, driving mode, and all other pertinent information to a drag race. The other thing is to include the times for the race. If it's a quarter mile, which generally these races are, then people will be able to compare the times you got versus the times all across the internet, and then at the very least, they have context for the race. 
People want transparency, and the more transparent you are with your testing methodology, the more people will trust you and in turn your results. What I'm asking for is to give people more reasons to trust you as a company by being more transparent. The fanboys will always cry foul, but the reasonable majority are willing to accept data if given evidence. By not giving enough evidence and covering your mistakes, you're taking away ammo from the reasonable people who would like to believe you but simply can't justify doing so. And lastly, to AutoTrader, if you disagree with what I'm saying or any of the points I've made, feel free to contact me personally and we can have an open and honest discussion. My email is down below. Anyways, that's just my opinion. What do you all think about this new AutoTrader video? Let me know in the comment section below and thanks for watching.